Every day in the USA, people find themselves in court. This is in <clears throat> State of Kansas versus Colts Daniel Gordon, case number 23 CR 31 and case number 23 CR 32. Would counsel take their appearances, please? May it please the court, the state appears by Jill Gillette County Attorney. Colt Gordon appears in person and in custody by and through counsel Richard Paw. And is he in Greenwood County custody or is it on this case? These it cases? is in Greenwood County custody, Judge. All right. On a different case. Very well. We have two separate matters. Both I have scheduled for a preliminary hearing. Are there any announcements? No, Your Honor. All right. Counsel, is there a particular case you'd like to begin with? Um, Judge, I guess we can take them in order uh, because the first one kind of becomes evidence of the second one. So that will be 23 CR 31. Uh, any first, or excuse me, any opening statements to be made? Uh, no, not from the state judge. No, Your Honor, thank you. Very well, I will, uh, you may call your first witness and. Um, judge, we'll start with Deputy Bliss, please. Well, Officer Bliss. Well, sir, if you could turn on your video, please. Thank you. You could raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do, sir. Thank you. You're under oath. Counsel, you may proceed. Would you please state your name for the record? Amy Bliss. And how are you employed? I'm a federal police officer with the VA, Robert J. Dole VA Police Office. And at the time of this matter, were you employed by Elk County? I was. And what date did you receive the dispatch regarding this defendant? Uh, July 15th, 2023. Okay. And is this, is the defendant with us on the screen today? Yes, ma'am. Can you identify the square that he's in? Uh, he is my, on the right, second to top, black and white striped shirt with a cork board behind him. Okay. And... Um, Please let the, re the record will reflect the witness has identified the defendant, Cold Gordon. Now, when you were dispatched to... Uh, where did you go to that day? Uh, went to a residence right there on uh, Wabash. Um, I can give you the address if you need it. I'd have to look at my notes. Um, by a uh, later identified Daniel Daniel Gordon, I believe. Okay. And uh, was that here in Howard? It was. Now, when you arrived, what was the complaint of Mr. Gordon? Uh, that... Uh, his son, Colt, had been driving a truck, and he was wanting the personalized Vietnam veteran tag back off of the truck was the initial dispatch call. And uh, was, were you able to locate the truck? Um, I, I did. It was actually, he had uh, driven up. In the, on the back side, he had pulled up in it on the back side of the residence. Were you able to recover the um, the tag off of the truck? Yes, Colt. While I was talking to Mr. and Daniel Gordon, Colt actually came out the front door and handed it to his dad. Okay. Now, while you were there. Um, and did you see Colt Gordon drive up in the back of the residence? I, I saw him backing out um, of, the, of the driveway in the alley, and I motioned for him to come up to me just so I could check and see if the tag was, if the vehicle was legal to drive. And what did you see uh, about the vehicle? Uh, that there was no tag on the back of the vehicle at all. And 
Um, now, was there, uh, did Mr. Gordon, uh, Daniel Gordon also relay any kind of threats that had been made? Uh, yes, he said that when he was trying to get the tag back, Colt had said that he was going to burn his blanket house down with them in it. And um, how long had the Vietnam veteran tag been expired? Uh, approximately three years, I believe. And was Mr. Colt Gordon um, attempting to operate the vehicle? He was. Okay. And did you take him into custody? I eventually did, yes. Okay. And... Um, just checking to make sure which ones are just the felonies. Now, when you try to take Colt Gordon into custody, what happened? He walked back into the residence after I told him that he was, in fact, under arrest. And um, when I went around to the back of the front of the house to go make contact again, I saw him running south um, on the block east of where I was at. He was running. And was he running on foot? Yes. Did you give chase to catch him? I did. Now, were you able to catch him? I eventually, yes. He actually, yeah, I eventually located him um, at his, at another residence. <clears throat> and what residence did you end up arresting him at? Uh, it was at located at 301 West Adams here in, there in Howard. And about how long did it take you to chase Colt before you found him and got him? Appro approximately 17 minutes. I will pass this witness to the defense. Mr. Paul. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, can you describe what Mr. Gordon was wearing when you saw him at your initial stop? Uh, I, all I know is he had on a t-shirt and he was barefooted, if I recall that right. Okay. And when you located him at on the Adams residence, according to you, 17 minutes later, was he wearing the same clothing? He had taken his shirt off, but he was holding it. Okay. And... Was he wearing shoes? I do not recall. I don't I don't recall. Okay. And you stated that you now work for the uh, at work for the VA as a police officer. Is that correct? That is correct, sir. Okay. And when did you leave uh, Elk County? At the end of September, sir. Was that a voluntary or involuntary separation? It was voluntary. Did Mr. Gordon ever uh, leave the property with that vehicle? Not when I was there. Okay. I have no further questions. Redirect? Uh, no, Your Honor. Officer, well, you said that you were arresting. What were you arresting the defendant for? Uh, driving without proper registration, uh, fleeing, uh, criminal... Uh, he threatened his family. Well, I mean, I want to make sure I've got the order correct. You said for fleeing. Because he ran. Yes, okay. Your Honor. Did, did you arrest? You, you said before that he you were placing him under arrest, and, he, and then he went into the house, and then you saw him running. What were you arresting him for before he went into the house? For a uh, criminal threat and driving without proper uh, vehicle registration. All right. Counsel, any questions based upon my questions? 
No, Your Honor. Yeah, just one. Um, did you see him drive into the property? No. No, don't. I, I didn't answer that. Okay, the witness needs to answer. If somebody's a witness that it's not on the stand, you need to be quiet, please. I witnessed him back in leaving the property. But he never Tried left. But he never left the property, correct? Correct. Okay, so he he was not driving on any roadway with that vehicle, correct? No, just the alleyway, sir. I have no further questions, Judge. Very well. Um, do you wish to have this witness uh, stay available or may she be released? Uh, she just remained available. Very well. Next witness. Uh, Daniel Gordon, Your Honor. Officer Bliss, you're off the witness stand at this time. If you wish to mute your or uh, uh, go off screen, you may do so. Uh, <laughs> Daniel Gordon, if you could turn on your video, please. I'm not sure how you do that. All right. Uh, if you're on um, Zoom, there should be something that looks like a camera somewhere. Yeah. Click on that. Okay. You cannot do it? Not yet. Yeah, I think it's. I'll send one of the over there. They're in the law library. Hang on, Judge. All right. <clears throat> we can't figure it out here. Okay. Think that right. We have video now. Okay. That's a damn twenty-eight percent battery five too. Uh, so. All right, uh, Mr. Uh, Gordon, if you'd raise your right hand, please, for an oath, please. Yeah. Swear, right. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So sure. 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 All right. Thank you. You're under oath. Please wait until. Uh, the person who's asking question completely stops talking before you answer. It makes it very difficult to make a record if it's if there's two people speaking at once. All right. Very well, you, Ms. Gillette, you may begin. Could you please state your name for the record? Daniel Ray Gordon. And how are you related to the defendant? I'm his father. Now. On July 15th of 23, did you call dispatch and ask for an officer? Uh, me and my son was having a little disagreement, and I thought maybe they could send an officer down and we could rectify the problem. You know, I didn't realize they were going to throw him in the pokey and cost me $10,000 bail to get All him right, out. Mr. G Mr. Gordon, the question was, did you call for dispatch? Please well, just you. answer the question, not 18 other things. Just answer the question that's asked. If the attorneys need more information, they'll ask more questions. Now, when the officer responded, did you let her know you needed your tag back? You know, I don't even remember. It's been so long ago. I'm old. I've got a bad memory. All right. Um, now, did you communicate to the officer that Colt still had the tag on the truck? No, I don't think I did. Okay. When he returned, did he bring the tag out and give it to you? Yeah. And um, is that tag, in fact, your property? Is it what? Is that tag your property? Sure. I paid for it. Okay. And did you want it back off of the truck? Well, I didn't want it on the truck. You know, it's still my truck, but I chose to take the tag off of my truck. You know, the tag is, is in my name. The truck is in my name. 
Now, had you been selling the truck or giving it to Colt? I, I'd say I'm more or less loaning it to him, you know. Did you tell the officer that you had given him the truck? No, I probably not. I okay. think. Do I need to play the video of what you said to the officer for you? Go ahead. Do we need to play the body camera of the officer so that you can see what you said to her? Oh, if you want to, that's great. Were your statements at the time true and correct statements? Is what now? Were your statements to the officer at the time true and correct as to the date and time that you had told them to her? Probably. <clears throat> Now, um, in the video, don't you tell her that you gave the truck to Colt to be his property? You know, I might have, you know. I, it's hard for me to rewind my little brain back that many months and remember just what I said. And did you tell her that you wanted it back because um, it is yours and you didn't give him consent to be keeping your tag? Nah, I think she probably made a lot of that stuff up. Okay. And then um, did you, in fact, tell her that Colt said that calling the cops that he would burn your fucking house down with you in it? I don't think so. I think it's more stuff she made up. Okay. Judge, I will pass this witness. Mr. Paul? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Gordon, you stated that you, uh, loaned him the truck and that was still your property, correct? Right. Okay. And that you don't ever remember telling the officer that Colt made any threats to you about burning your house down, correct? No, I don't remember that. Okay. Judge, I will pass on this witness. Can you redirect, Ms. Gillette? Uh, no, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Daniel Gordon, how old are you? 74. Have you been ever found to be incompetent? Not recently. Have you ever been? No. Thank you. Any inquiries uh, based upon my inquiries? No, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, Mr. Gordon. You are off the witness stand. Uh, if you wish to remain, that's fine. I just ask that you uh, mute the screen. Well, Ms. Gillette, are you going to have any other witnesses? Uh, Judge, we'll be recalling Deputy Bliss. All right. Um, so Mr. Gordon can be, can he be, re well, just mute your screen. If, if you wish to uh, turn off the video, you may do so but I need you to, to mute your screen at this time, Mr. Gordon, or somebody there can help you with that. All right. Um, Deputy uh, or uh, Officer Bliss, you're you're still under oath and you are back on the stand. Counsel, you may proceed. Uh, Deputy, um, you're still under oath, I believe. Um, now, did you have your body camera on? I did. And is it a true and accurate depiction of the interactions between you and Mr. Daniel Gordon and Cole Gordon at the time? It is. And uh, has there been any modifications or corrections to it? No. And um, did you give a copy of that to the state? I did. Your Honor, we'll move to admit the body cam of Deputy Bliss Estates Exhibit 1. Mr. Paul? No objection. It may be admitted and published. Um, on chestnut. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
That's where my son stays. Okay. Well, I'll give you my black Dodge pickup. Uh -huh. been down. Okay, my Vietnam vet tag, you know, expired a couple of years ago. Okay. So I go over a day because he borrowed my floor jacket and didn't bring it back. He got my floor jacket. And I said, I'll tell you what, <coughs> you, uh, you need to get this pickup tagged because I want my fucking tag back. Uh -huh. Well, he says, hell, if you want to take it right now. Great. No problem. So I get my tag while well, I'm taking it off. He takes the tag off my little red truck. Where's Vietnam that place? Uh, so when I get home, I notice my tag's on. So I go back over. Uh, and I told him, that's fucking shit. Get my fucking tag back. So he gives my tag back. And uh, I didn't have my inhaler. It took me about two minutes to get my fucking air back. Mm -hmm. And so I get my truck and leave. Well, by that time, he'd taken my old tag back that I'd taken off the black truck. He'd taken it, and I didn't notice it till I get home. So I called him up, and I said, I said, I tell you what, I'm tired of fucking with you. Bring my fucking tag back, and within five minutes, I'm going to call the fucking cops on you. <clears throat> he said, you call the fucking cops, I'm burning your motherfucking ass down the year. And it's like, oh, that's my little Hello. Thing. I, 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 well, there he is. Like I said, I'm tired of this shit. You know? That's just, the only one. Whatever. I'm doing you all the favor. You ain't done me none. Okay, I got my tag back. That's all I needed. Okay. Yeah. If you have any other problems. <laughs> no. No, that pretty much covers it. But, okay. you know, I don't need him throwing his tag back on the fucking pickup, you know? Right. Driving around for another yeah, and he, I mean, know, six or eight months. Yeah. I mean, it's so much been expired for two or three years, you know? When I give him the truck. Yeah. Now Is he driving fine. the truck now? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Go and turn the truck up for me for a second. Go and turn the pull keys up. Let me see those for a second. You know it is against the law and it's illegal to drive a vehicle without a tag. You know that, right? I haven't made it on the road yet. You're still driving. Can I get out? Yeah, go ahead. I'll walk home. <laughs> Can I get out too? Yep, please do so. So, what's going to happen is, they also have a screwdriver, don't lose your screwdriver. <laughs> this vehicle cannot move unless it has insurance, I have insurance. and a current registration on it. I must have this right here for now. Okay? Yes, so, um, I'm going to talk to your dad see if uh, it, can stay here. it can stay here otherwise we're gonna have to impound it <laughs> I'll I have a truck another truck and trailer I can come get it we aren't gonna well technically it. I'm actually supposed to impound it um, by no somebody knife that pile. knife something I don't know fire on the boat trailer I don't know what you're talking about Beth. well I saw you reach in the truck run around run back in the truck Came out and looked. There's a slash in the tire. Did you slash the tire? No, ma'am. Come and look. I don't need to look back. You got a flat tire when it pulls up. You pull up the tire and suddenly you get a tire. You want to rest your fucking car. Did he threaten to slash the tire? No. Okay. Did he threaten you? Anybody with anything. He threatened to burn the house down. If we call the cops, he's going to burn the house down. 
seen the tire, tire? Was flat when I pulled up. I don't know how it happened. Looks like it was cut. Yes, I didn't do it. Do you have anything in your pockets? Yeah. Are you arresting me? I am arresting you. For what? For uh, threat. For threat? I didn't yeah. threaten anybody. Uh, I just... I didn't but, hey, threaten anybody. I, I, did I, did he threaten to burn the house down? I did not give you say that. Okay. No, I need you, sir, to come back over here. Oh my lord. He just took off running. Four County, I need a uh, backup here. I've got somebody I'm trying to arrest. And he just took off running across town, headed north in between Wabash and. Hold on, stand by. Sorry about that, Judge. Our internet went out. Uh, Happened to me late last week. <laughs> okay, hold, hold on a minute. Ms. Bliss is on the witness stand. Do you have, Ms. Gillette, uh, do you have any questions of your depth of the former Deputy Bliss? No, Judge. We stopped just as the chase started to happen. Then she had to chase him down to arrest him. I didn't know that we needed to watch them chase him for mm -hmm. 17 more minutes. Mr. Paul, since you didn't object to the admission, I was assuming you have already. Uh, have, have received and, and viewed the, the video that was stage one? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Um, I do have a question for Ms. Bliss, though. Based you, may, on you may proceed. Thank you. Uh, when you uh, were interviewing Daniel Gordon and he told you uh, what Colt told him, um, did he look like he was in any fear? Um, he was highly agitated when I was talking with him at the, okay. and I don't know when he told him that. Okay. I, I don't have any further questions, but I would, would like to recall Daniel Gordon. All right. Well, uh, we're in the state's case in chief. Uh, Deputy Bliss is off the witness stand now. Ms. Gillette, do you have any other witnesses? I do not judge. Um, All right. So the state rests, Mr. Paul, what, uh, do you have witnesses you wish to present? I would just like to recall Daniel Gordon. All right. Um, Mr. Okay, if his screen can be unmuted, please. That may take the clerk to do that. All right, it's unmuted. Mr. Daniel Gordon, you are still under oath. Now Mr. Paul will have questions and then Ms. Gillette will have questions for you as well. Mr. Paul? Yes, Mr. Gordon, uh, you you saw the body cam, correct? Right. Okay. And when you relayed to the officer uh, what Colt told you, um, did that place you in any kind of fear? Like no. No, you 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 Zero. thought it was, you thought it was an idle threat, correct? You know, me and Colt were this away. Yeah. It was just an idle threat. Didn't mean anything. Still don't mean anything. Okay. So you weren't you weren't afraid that he was going to do anything to you? Were Absolutely you? not. Okay. I don't have any questions based on no further questions, Judge. Ms. Gillette? No further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Gordon, you're off the witness stand now. Um, if the clerk could mute his screen, please. Mr. Pod, do you have any additional witnesses you wish to call? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. But uh, uh, any rebuttal witnesses, Ms. Gillette? No, Your Honor. Do... I think the video speaks for itself. All right. Well, that concludes the evidence. Um, I'm ready to rule unless counsel wish to make a, uh, a, a statement. I, I, do, I do, Judge. Judge, uh, please. Based on the first, first, hold on. Does Ms. Gillette, do you wish to make uh, a closing argument? Um, sure, Judge. We can make closing arguments. 
in this matter, there is a threat. The officer took it as a threat towards them, both Mr. Gordon, Daniel Gordon, and um, Elizabeth had relayed that Colt had threatened to burn the house down. Miss um, Ms. Gordon and Mr. Gordon both said those before Colt was placed under arrest. Um, both of them made those statements to the officer. The truck did not have a tag on it as well. Um, she said, you're being arrested for threat, threatening them. She did not say you're being arrested just for the tag. Um, that's specifically what came from her mouth it is the perception of the officer and the totality of the circumstances that allows her to make a judgment call in the moment. Um, she is making that judgment call in the moment. There's also a slashed tire that's now being investigated um, and has been seen on the video and as to whether or not Cole did that for their harm. Um, and so now there's more of an investigation and the video does speak for itself that they were upset that he had said that. Both of them relayed that. Um, and they did, in fact, call for officers, which was what Colt had said he was going to do if they called for officers to get the tag back. And um, so, therefore, it could be perceived as an actual bona fide threat. And we would ask the court to bind the defendant over on count one and two interference with law enforcement for arrest for criminal threat, which was being investigated and for the criminal threat. Thank you, Mr. Paul. Your Honor, uh, first of all, the county attorney has referenced things that were not ever even in evidence. Um, you know, Miss Gordon didn't testify. She talks about a slash tire that was not even testified to. Mr. Mr. Daniel Gordon on the stand testified that he didn't think this was a, a threat at all. In fact, he said it was an idle threat. He was not in fear. And uh, one of the things, you know, a criminal threat is with the intent to place another one in fear. And that be Daniel Gordon. And he was not in fear. Um, therefore, you know, I don't believe that the uh, officer had the uh, right to arrest him on that. And judge, I would ask that you uh, dismiss both counts one and two. Thank you. All right. This is a preliminary hearing. The, the standard uh, and the burden of proof is on the state that show probable cause in regards to felonies. There are two felonies listed here, interference with law enforcement. Uh, where indicating the defendant did resist arrest and uh, flee on foot from Deputy Bliss. Also, uh, count two, criminal threat, uh, where the defendant communicated a threat to commit violence, communicated with the intent to place another in fear, uh, that being Daniel Gordon. Now, Mr. Daniel Gordon, uh, the father of the defendant, uh, when he was being interviewed by the officer in uh, the Mr. Gordon, the father, apparently was the one that called to have law enforcement brought into this in the first place. Uh, he was trying to get the tag back. He mentioned it in passing in regards to that the defendant had said he was going to burn his house down uh, a little more colorfully than that if if the law enforcement if law enforcement was uh, uh, was called. The officer uh, broke off after the defendant went into the house uh, when she was trying to, she observed or heard the vehicle being moved, the vehicle that, that uh, you know, black truck was not on the roadway, did not have a, 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 a tag on it, but as I indicated, it was not on a public roadway that I could see. She was investigating that, speaking with the defendant when another individual uh, came in uh, interrupted, uh, that individual in the video was in the courtroom under Elizabeth uh, Gordon, uh, where she reported um, 
about a tire being slashed uh, in regards to a boat trailer, which apparently was on the path from where the defendant left to when he was, uh, before he was stopped. She said not once, but twice to the officer that the defendant had uh, threatened to, to burn the, the house down. The state of mind of the victim is, is one factor. However, uh, there can be a criminal threat. It's when the threat is the intention of the, the speaker, which is the defendant, uh, to place another in fear. And the defendant, uh, I find there's probable cause that the defendant did so in regards to a criminal threat, uh, try to keep uh, his father and or mother from calling law enforcement about the tag issue. Additionally, uh, he it was clearly uh, identified, you know, the officer uh, in, in responding to the officer, she was clearly had told him that he was under arrest. He started walking away. Uh, that is, uh, she was investigating uh, the criminal threat as she stated on the video uh, when the defendant had asked what, what he was being arrested for. And that was the thing, that was a felony she was arresting him for. Therefore, the interference with law enforcement officer is appropriately charged a felony as well. If she'd been investigating only a misdemeanor, then that wouldn't be a felony. Uh, the interference would be a misdemeanor as well. But that's not what the, the facts shows uh, for probable cause determination. So I do bind the defendant over on counts one and two. Those are the sole felonies. Uh, of case number 23 CR 31. That will conclude. Uh, we'll need to set an arraignment and uh, get a judge assignment. Does the clerk have a uh, assignment for that? Yes, Judge, that would be assigned to Judge Ricky. And we could set that for arraignment on January 29 at one o'clock. And that's via Zoom? Yes, sir. Thank you. So uh, January 29th at one, if council have a conflict with that, I would uh, ask you to contact uh, Judge Ricky's AA. But at this time, that'll be the next hearing date. Is there anything else to be uh, discussed on 23 CR 31? Not from the state, Judge. Mr. Paul, uh, you're you're muted. I, I I saw your lips move, but I don't. Oh, know. Your Honor, thank you. Thank you. That concludes uh, 23 CR 31. We'll now proceed to State of Kansas versus Colt Gordon, which is 23 CR 32. Counsel, if you'd state your appearances, please. May it please the court, the state appears by Jill Gillette County Attorney. Colt Gordon appears in person and in custody behind through counsel Richard Paw. Very well. Uh, that can, uh, the defendant appears in person at the appears to be the Greenwood County Jail. Uh, there is one count of theft of services. You know, that's how it's captioned, but the uh, the body of the, the complaint doesn't say theft of services. It's a uh, theft of uh, uh, theft of a black color Dodge Ram. Uh, that is charged as a very level nine non-person felony. Um, are the parties ready to proceed? We are, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Very well, the state may call our first witness. The state will call Deputy uh, Liss. Officer Bliss, if you could turn on your video and unmute, please. All right. If you, Ms. Bliss, you, you were under oath in another case. We've concluded that. So I'm going to re, uh, in, uh, place you under oath again. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help you, God. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. You're under oath. And you may proceed, Ms. Gillette. And... Could you please state your name for the record in this matter? Amy Bliss. And how are you currently employed? 
I'm a federal officer with the Robert J. Dole VA. And on July 19th of 2023, um, how were you employed? I was a deputy of the Elk County Sheriff's Department. And did you and other officers investigate the removal of a vehicle from impound? We did. Now, did you, what, what vehicle did you impound? Uh, the Black Dodge. Okay. Was that related in the prior case? It was. Did you photograph that Black Dodge on July 19th of 2023? I did. When was it noticed to have been gone from impound? I don't recall on the day what it, the day, I don't recall. I got called out okay. after it was taken. All right. And did you photograph that vehicle after it had been removed from impound? I did. Where did you photograph that vehicle at? It was at his father's residence on Wabash Street in Howard. And are those photos that you have provided for the state true and accurate depictions of the vehicle and the condition you found it in on July 19th? Yes, they are. And have there been any modifications, corrections, or additions to those photos? No. Your Honor, we had asked to admit the photos of the vehicle at uh, the Wabash address. And what, are, what are the state's exhibit numbers? It'll be State's Exhibit 1, Judge. It is a series of four pages that contain seven photographs showing the location and condition of the black Dodge truck that was removed from impound. Mr. Paul? No objection. Stage 1 is admitted without objection. Are these the, is this page 1 of Exhibit 1, Deputy? Yes, I believe so, yes. All right. Is this the same um, lean to carport that we saw in the prior video? Yes. And is this the bed of that same truck in the interior? Yes. And is this also the same truck? Yes. Is this the VIN stickers? It is. And is this the same truck? It is. And does it show that the tag still is missing from the vehicle? Correct. And um, were you called to that location or did were you on the lookout for the vehicle? I believe they found it and I got called. We were looking for it and located it, so I was called out. And did you make uh, contact with uh, Mr. Daniel Gordon regarding the vehicle being on his property? I do. I did not. Okay. I don't think. And did the truck then, uh, did you end up talking to him, Mr. Um, Gordon, later on about the vehicle? Uh, Jill, without my notes, I don't, I don't recall. Okay. Um, and was, do you remember if Mr. Gordon was upset about the vehicle having been towed? I do remember that he was upset about the whole situation afterwards, yes. All right, we have multiple Mr. Gordons. If the council could um, make sure that we're, uh, to clarify who we're referring to. Was Daniel Gordon upset about the truck being towed? Yes. And um, all right. And um, I will pass this witness, Your Honor. Very well, Mr. Paul. Uh, Officer, Officer Bliss, did you see uh, Mr. Colt Gordon drive that vehicle away from the impound? No. Okay. So you do not know how it got there to Mr. Daniels Gordon's residence, correct? I do not know. Okay. So Mr. Daniel Gordon or anybody else other than Mr. Gordon could have driven that car there, correct? I don't know. 
No further questions. Any uh, redirect, Council? Not a deputy to list, Your Honor. Very well. Uh, uh, may this witness be released, or do you need to have her available? Um, she may be released for this case. Thank you, Officer. You're released from your subpoena and free to go. Thank you, Your Honor. Next witness, please. Your Honor, we will call under Sheriff Franks. Under Sheriff, if you'd raise your right hand, please. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you. You're under oath. Counsel, you may proceed. Under Sheriff, did you conduct an investigation into the theft of this vehicle from the towing impound area? I did. And um, during the course of your investigation, um, was it real? Did you figure out that it was Colt Borden that took the vehicle out of impound? That was information I was given by a person I spoke to with over the telephone. Okay. Objection hearsay. I'm going to give him some leeway at this juncture, um, not taking it for the truth of the matter asserted, uh, but what information the officer received. So uh, the answer will stand. Next question, please. And did Daniel Gordon call the office upset about having to pay for the towing of Colt's truck? He did. And did, when you went out to investigate, um, did he admit who took the truck? I don't believe I spoke with Mr. Gordon that night. Okay. Did you speak with him at a later time? I do not remember speaking with him. I, we attempted to speak with him the night that we located the truck behind his house, but nobody would answer the door or they weren't home. I'm not sure which. Okay. And did, um, did you interview Colt Gordon about who took the truck out of impound? I do not recall interviewing him. Okay. And um, did someone else speak with Mr. Daniel Gordon from the sheriff's office about the truck getting to his location? I don't know if anybody else from the sheriff's office spoke to him about that or not. Okay. And um, who was the person that you talked to that knew Colt had taken the truck out of impound? Uh, I spoke with a Shalisa Panelson who had called the sheriff's office here to tell us of the vehicle being taken. Okay. And who was the other person that um, was um, also relaying information? Judge, I'm going to object as to hearsay. Deputy, you can answer, or uh, under sheriff, you can answer the question. Uh, I spoke with a Shalisa Panelson who told me that she don't tell me what she said. Just the, the the question is who told you these things? Shalisa. And who is who's a friend of hers that was dealing with Colt Gordon at the time? Uh, Tavia Mitchell. Was she dating Colt? That's the information I was given, yes. Okay. And so you did locate the vehicle at the Wabash address? Yes. Okay. And um, Judge, can I have a five minute recess? And on the grounds? Um, I'm looking to see if one specific witness had been subpoenaed. We'll give you a, a brief um, moment to do that. We, we're this, not going to recess. This system being down, some subpoenas I have copies of and some I don't. So <laughs> I think I'm missing one of the subpoenas. I'll, I'll, you know, you, you may go check. We'll, we'll just remain in, uh, in place and 
Okay. Talk back up if when you're done. Judge, I'm gonna need to ask for continuance because I need to have the subpoenas. It's hard with the system being down to have had the two girls subpoenaed that were also witnesses. And there's a recorded statement from one of them that um, I need to get a copy from under Sheriff Franks and provide to Mr. Paul when they were reporting that um, Colt Gordon is the one that took this truck. All right, Mr. Paul. Judge, I'm gonna object to any continuance. Um, I, I'm not going to allow a continuance uh, at this juncture, we have started the evidence. Um, this is a preliminary hearing. It's uh, jeopardy does not attach uh, at this juncture. I believe that. So, uh, for the purposes of today, the state rests. Yes, we do, Judge. All right. Um, Well, I'll, I'll, I'll ask the question anyway. Mr. Paul, do you wish to present any evidence? Judge, I would like to cross-examine the sheriff, Officer you know, Mr. Mr. Franks. Very well. You may uh, uh, question the under Sheriff Franks. Un under Sheriff, direct examination. Okay. Un under Sheriff, you, you did not see uh, Colt Gordon drive that vehicle away from the impound, did you? I did not. Okay. No further questions, Judge. And it's still no additional evidence. Is that correct? Correct. Mr. Lett? Um, Judge, we do have like Sheriff Walker, but I need those two girls for the hearsay because they're the ones that reported it was Colt that took the truck. All right. Um, the, the court finds that the felony, there has not been a uh, probable cause submitted in regards to the felony theft of service or theft at this time. So at this juncture, that count is dismissed without prejudice. If the there is still a misdemeanor there, so I will set that on the court's calendar for arraignment. That and Aaron, that'll be on my calendar at this juncture. Actually, we've already had a, a, a first, well, no, there was a, a, a felony, uh, so we didn't take a plea. Of, um, Ms. Gillette, do you wish to set this or do you just wish to dismiss this count uh, with the contemplating whether you're gonna file or refile it or not? Um, we may refile it, Judge. So if you wanna put it on a control, um, I don't know if you want to do it that same January 29th at like 11. That's Judge Ricky's calendar. So I'm, I'm going to dismiss the, the, the case at this juncture. If the state wishes to refile, they may do so. Uh, Jeopardy is not attached, as I indicated. Uh, but if the county wishes to, to uh, reassert the felony, then that, that'll be their their decision uh, based upon their witnesses. So tw uh, 32 is, is uh, dismissed at this time. Is there any uh, additional things that we need to cover today? I can't think of anything else, Judge. Mr. No, Paul? Your Honor, thank you. Okay. If uh, I'm going to, so we are adjourned. If counsel could stay on the for just a moment. Uh, but we are concluded in the witnesses and the defendant's free to go.